Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Julian. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is seafood fraud. Chances are if you eat seafood, you have been misled on the seafood you have eaten at one point. It's just, in fact, not even to say that you've been misled over the course of your lifetime. To say that you've been misled in the last couple months is probably a more accurate statement and definitely within the last year. It is very, very commonplace in the seafood industry uh, to find mislabeled seafood. This just in from Organic Authority, organicauthority.com. You've likely been a victim of fish fraud according to a new report. One in five seafood samples do not correspond with the indications on the package label, according to yet another report on seafood and fish fraud released Wednesday by the nonprofit Ocean Conservation Organization Oceana. This is from September 2016. The report examined more than 200 studies from 50 countries and provided analysis of more than 25,000 seafood samples. 20% of the fish in the survey were found to be incorrectly labeled. Farmed Asian catfish was most frequently the imposter sold in place of 18 types uh, of more expensive fish, including cod. So they're putting a cheap Asian catfish in for other fish. They're substituting that in. It is likely that the average consumer has eaten mislabeled fish for sure, Beth Lowell, the senior campaign director of Oceana and author of the paper, told the New York Times, you're getting ripped off while you enjoyed your meal you're paying a high price for with a low fish. 85% of mislabeled samples were substituted for fish that could pose health risks to some consumers, such as pregnant women and children. This is huge. Let me read this again. 58% of the mislabeled samples were substituted for fish that could pose health risks to some consumers. Now, people are going to say, well, before I read that, they're going to say, well, what do I care if I had a mislabeled fish? It was really good. I didn't care what it tastes like. Because you're going to have people that make those comments here on, on my YouTube channel or wherever. Oh, I don't care. It still tasted good. 58% could pose a health risk. That is terrible, people. That is disgusting and pathetic. Mislabeled fish all, also hide peddling of endangered species, such as Brazilian large tooth sawfish being sold as shark. <laughs> we kept thinking we'd find a success story, a place where seafood wouldn't be mislabeled, Lowell said. Every single study that we reviewed except for one found seafood fraud. So, as a chef, as a young chef, I was always taught to buy seafood that, or fish in its whole form, where you can see the skin, you can see the head if the head's still there, but as soon as you as soon as you remove the skin, the head, the bones, and you're having a white piece of fish fillet sitting on a plate in a box, in a case, it loses all identity. I was taught that years ago, and chefs know this. Once you lose the identity of a fish, you can easily substitute other fish in. Years and years ago, when I first began in the industry, I was in the in the in the 90s, and I was in Colorado as a young chef. And I remember going to a culinary American Culinary Federation meeting with all these executive chefs, and I was like, "Ooh, ah, I'm around all these great chefs." And I remember one of these chefs saying, "Who was at a, the executive chef at a seafood restaurant? He was bragging about." how he saved food costs and how he was able to meet food costs. And one of his tricks was, and he totally said this out loud in front of a bunch of people, that he substitutes cheap tilapia, tilapia, which is an extremely cheap fish, as red snapper. The time tilapia was probably $2.50 a pound, $2 a pound, and snapper would have been eight, $9 a pound, $7 a pound on the cheaper side, maybe six if it was super, super cheap snapper. That's a three to four times difference in price. And they're charging $29 for the fish. And it goes back to that, that saying, as soon as you take the fillet, the, the, the skin and the head off, you don't see what's happening anymore. So if you're really concerned about eating the proper fish, if you're in a restaurant where they do serve a whole fish, I would take advantage of that, definitely. Um, but as a consumer, you have to educate yourself. And there's certain fish you just know that are, that can, be very mislabeled. Now, if you're buying tilapia, that's a cheap fish to begin with. Chances are they're not putting a cheaper fish in its place because you can't go much cheaper than tilapia. Um, salmon, 
you can tell farm salmon versus wild salmon. It's a dead giveaway by the fat content and the coloring and sometimes the, the more pronounced flavor of the fish. So there's certain species that, that yes, you can do something and look at and say, okay, yeah, this, this may be a less of a likelihood, but I gotta tell you, once you start with certain fish, some of those white fish, white flaky fish, you have no idea. And the best bet if you're at a restaurant is the better the restaurant is, the more likely they're gonna be on top of their game. If they specialize in seafood, then chances are if they have a good seafood distributor. Now, the big thing now with restaurants and, and our food in general is transparency. Places want you to know where their food's coming from, or we want to know where their food's coming from. So places are now now um, coming forth and saying this, this, and this. Like at my restaurant, we tell you where everything is from. You know, this, you want to see it? I'll show you the package. I'll show you the box that it came in because I'm proud of those ingredients that we source and the places that it comes from, whether it's fresh, frozen, dried, whatever. Here it is. Here it is. Here's our burger bun. Here's what they put in the burger bun. There's no funky chemicals. Here's our box of soda that we're using on the soda gun. No sodium benzate, no funky, no funky stuff. That's why the black cherry cola is white because there's no food coloring in it. So I'm very proud of that. A lot of restaurants are proud of this. You need to find a restaurant that is proud of everything that they are serving. And I hate to say it, but you might, if you like seafood and you want to eat really good seafood, you might want to go to like a seafood chain sometimes, like Foley's or Legal Seafood, because those people are actually seafood distributors as well, and they're typically on top of their game. Not saying they won't make a mistake, because I did catch Legal Seafood a few years back, misquoting or misstating where their salmon was from. Um, they did apologize to me. Um, but places like that definitely will have more of a beat on where the fish is coming from. If you go into a fish market, go to a fish, just go to solely a fish market, or go into a health food store and buy in the frozen section. When you go into a Whole Foods or some type of health food store, they typically have a higher quality brand that is frozen. Now don't, don't turn your head to frozen seafood. Frozen seafood is probably one of the better ways to eat seafood because you have a process now that's called frozen at sea or frozen on shore. When they catch the fish, they freeze it a lot of times within two, three, four hours of catching it. There's no, the, the bacteria hasn't had a chance to grow. It's actually fresher than fresh. They freeze it at negative 80 degrees. It's cryogenically frozen like that, flash frozen. And it's fresher than fresh. And in some states, sushi has to be frozen. They're not allowed to serve fish for sushi that wasn't previously frozen. So chances are you've eaten frozen seafood before that you had no idea and probably thought it was better than something that's never been frozen. So, so frozen seafood is not something to be overlooked. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. You have every right to know what's in your food. So ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. You know what to do. Share, like, comment.